रजिस्ट नाउ हेलो डियर चिल्ड्रेन नमस्ते एंड वेलकम टू येट अनादर वीडियो ऑफ आर सीरीज बायो बाइट्स इन 15 मिनट्स एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट सेक्सुअल रिप्रोडक्शन इन फ्लावरिंग प्लांट्स यस इन टू द वर्ल्ड ऑफ प्लांट्स टुडे एंड दिस इज अंबिका योर बायोलॉजी मास्टर टीचर राइट हियर ऑन दिस अमेजिंग प्लेटफार्म ऑफ वेदांतु ओके गाइस लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड ऑफ कोर्स एज यू नो ट्रू टू इट्स नेम वी ट्राई एंड गिव यू बाइट साइज्ड वीडियोस इन दिस सीरीज जस्ट इन केस लेट मी रिमाइंड यू इफ यू आर लुकिंग एट डिटेल्ड एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ ऑल ऑफ दीस कॉन्सेप्ट्स प्लीज डू नॉट फॉरगेट टू चेक आउट द मेन प्लेलिस्ट ओके एवरीथिंग हैज बीन कवर्ड वेल इन डिटेल ओके टाइम फॉर अ पॉजिटिव कोट fly high but always remember to stay grounded that's very very important otherwise you're going to fall down very fast and remember children vedantu pro subscription has a lot of amazing uh, features and a lot of amazing courses out there for you so remember to visit the link in the description box below and check out the pinned comment also in the comment section below remember to apply the coupon code ambpro to avail the best benefits that we have on vedantu pro subscription okay and uh, let's get started parts of a flower well of course let me remind you that as far as flowering plants are concerned the flower is said to be the main reproductive part of the plant we call them angiosperms flowering plants so these are the parts of a flower especially uh, the image you see here is that of a bisexual flower wherein both the male and the female reproductive parts would be found on the same flower there are certain plants that produce unisexual flowers a separate male flower and a separate female flower as well but for the ease of understanding whenever we learn this topic we go by looking at an image of a bisexual flower okay so a, a real life example of a bisexual flower would be hibiscus i'm sure all indian children know what hibiscus looks like so let's get started starting with the most colorful part of the flower which are the petals and then the sepals which are these green things a uh, green stuff which are uh, tiny and close to the base of the petals right and then there is a stuff here called the receptacle okay and then this area is called the pedicel something like the stalk and then there is uh, the female part and the male part the male part which is called the stamen okay the stamen is made up of two sub parts the anther and the filament so anther and filament together make up what we call the stamen okay so uh, then coming to the female part of it there are three major parts uh, which are part of the female reproductive uh, part of the flower stigma style and ovary stigma is this area style is this long neck like structure and this swollen base area is called the ovary and it's within the ovary that ovules would be found and the female gametes would obviously be there so stigma style and ovary together make up the female reproductive part of a flower which we call the carpel or the pistil okay so stamen male reproductive part carpel or pistil female part and remember the names of the sub parts as well very very important to know okay so now that i have told you about the male and female reproductive parts it's also important to mention the gametes in a flowering plant well uh, the pollen grain which are produced by the anther remember the anther and the filament right this is the anther and this is the filament together they make up the sperm or the male reproductive part it's the anther which produces pollen grains okay or pollen as we commonly call them one single pollen grain of course the structure is not completely important for you from a 10th uh, standard cbse perspective but then it's just there to give you a clear idea about what exactly it looks like that visualization you know in biology is super important so inside a pollen grain you can see that there are two sperm nuclei so remember that there are two sperms two sperm cells within one pollen grain very important and then as far as the female gamete is concerned remember i told you about the ovary right the swollen base part within which there is the ovule now this ovule is what is shown in a uh, zoomed in image in this uh, uh, region and uh, as you can see within the ovule 
there are many different uh, structures about which I will tell you in some time. But the most important thing to note here, since we are talking about gametes, is that the egg cell or the ovum is placed inside the ovule. Now, the number of ovules may vary from species to species, but whatever it is, it is within the ovule that you would find the egg. And where do you find the ovule? Within the ovary. And the ovary is part of the carpel or the pistil. Okay. <coughs> so, these are the gametes of the flowering plants. Now, coming to the concept of pollination, wherein pollination is said to be the process by which pollen grains are transferred from the anther of a flower to the stigma of a flower. It could either be of the same flower or of a different flower. If at all, pollination happens to occur from the anther of a flower to the stigma of the very same flower, just like what you see here, we call it self-pollination. It can occur by itself. So this obviously, it has to be um, able to occur. It can occur only in bisexual flowers. Okay. Uh, whereas cross-pollination is the process by which pollen grain get transferred from the anther of a flower to the stigma of a different flower. It could either be the same plant or a different plant, but from the um, anther of a flower to the stigma of a different flower. So obviously, for cross-pollination to happen, the help of an external pollinating agent, just like uh, insects or animals or wind, water, something like that would be required. Pollinating agents, as we call them. So that's about cross-pollination and self-pollination. Now, if at all pollination has been successful, as in between the same species, uh, pollination has happened to occur. This would be the result. The pollen grain, as you can see, on top of the stigma, if at all it happens to get deposited on the stigma of a flower belonging to the same species also, or, a, or a related species at least, okay, uh, the pollen grain is said to germinate. Okay, And then what happens? The pollen grain, once it germinates, it grows into a pollen tube. Rather, it grows, it develops into a pollen tube and that grows further and further down the long neck-like region of the pistil, which we call the style. This entire neck-like region is called the style. Okay, so it got deposited on the stigma and germinates there. The pollen tube grows further down the style and by chemical attraction, it grows towards the ovary and goes into the ovule. It enters into the ovule and finally is able to meet the egg cell which is there. This is how fertilization occurs. Okay, so uh, it's important to remember that um, within this pollen tube, there would be two sperm cells which are released. Remember I told you one pollen grain would be comprised of two sperm cells, right? So both of them come down through this pollen tube. Both of them get released into the ovule. So why are two sperm cells actually entering it with? There is only one egg cell, right? So let us look at it a little deeper. I hope the structure is clear to you now. The pollen grain once again falling on the stigma, grows a pollen tube and the two sperms are coming down through the pollen tube, coming down towards the ovary. And within the ovary, it enters into the ovule through an opening which is called the micropyle. Okay, so all these are extra terms. Some terms are a little extra from beyond your syllabus, but it's all right. It will help you in NTSC and Olympiads and all of that. So through the micropyle, the pollen tube grows and enters into the ovule. And what happens is out of these two sperm cells, one of it fuses with the egg cell. This is the egg cell, right? One of the male nuclei, the sperm nuclei, fuses with the egg cell to form the diploid zygote. Okay, so this is one sperm. What about the other sperm? What does that do? The other sperm goes, gets released further into the ovule and fuses with what we call the polar nuclei to form what we call the endosperm because the sperm cells or the daddy cells, as we can probably call it, just for the fun element. Of course, don't write it in your exam. Okay? So the daddy cells always make sure that the baby is formed and also there is sufficient nourishment also for the baby. That's why endosperm is also produced because endosperm is the 
tissue that helps in nourishment of the growing embryo. Zygote, of course, just like in higher uh, animals as well, develops into the embryo and grows further and further until eventually uh, the seeds and the fruits are formed. The ovule eventually develops into the seeds. The ovaries are developed into the fruits. And the same process continues with the next generation. Okay, so this is what we mean by double fertilization because two sperm nuclei are involved. One of it fusing with the egg cell, fertilizing the egg cell to form the zygote. The other sperm cell fusing with the polar nuclei to form the, the endosperm, which is the nourishing tissue. So what about the other structures you see here? Those are not very important, but then just uh, for you to have a full picture of it, let me tell you, there are a couple of uh, cells which we call synergids flanking the egg cell. Just like the egg cell is sitting right there like a queen, like a princess in the middle. There are two synergids like bridesmaids, one on either side. They are there for additional support. And uh, the polar nuclei, I have told you, because they fuse with the other sperm cell to form the endosperm. And there are also three additional cells here, as you can see. They are called antipodals. They are also there for additional support. Okay, so three antipodals, two polar nuclei, and there are two synergids plus one egg cell. <coughs> this is about double fertilization. Since two sperm cells are involved, we call it double fertilization. Of course, it's not because two zygotes are formed. Okay, so I hope that's clear to you. And this is it. Okay, so have a look at it uh, in a deeper sense. One sperm fertilizes the egg forming the zygote. The other one combines with the two polar nuclei, as you can see here, to form the endosperm nucleus. Triploid, as we call it, because three nuclei, three haploid nuclei are fusing together there. Zygote obviously has to be deployed because it's the fusion of a sperm and an egg cell. Two haploid cells fuse to form a diploid zygote. All right, so now the session in a bite size for you. Remember, the flower is the reproductive organ of a plant, especially in angiosperms. Pollination occurs by transfer of pollen from the anther to the stigma. Okay, pollination can either be self-pollination or cross-pollination. A uh, pollen grain gives out a pollen tube which grows down the style towards the ovary. The pollen tube allows two sperm cells to reach the ovule where one of them fertilizes the egg, forms the zygote, while the other fuses with polar nuclei to form the endosperm, the triploid endosperm, to nourish the growing embryo. Okay, so that is about sexual reproduction in flowering plants. Children, please click on the like button if you have enjoyed the session and found it useful so that you can let us know that uh, you would love to have more and more of uh, these kinds of sessions, right? In general, I understand that many of you have been enjoying these, especially because they are literally bite-sized, right? Quick revision really helps. So uh, also do remember to share it with your friends because I'm sure everyone will benefit from this. Eve of the exam, eve of a test, on the day of a test and so on. Last minute revision. This is what we intend to give you. And remember to stay subscribed to the channel Vedantu 9th and 10th English if you haven't done it yet, uh, because we intend to come up with more and more such innovative sessions to make your learning journey a lot smoother. All right. And also, let me remind you, follow me on Instagram as well. If you want a quick break from your studies, because we put up a lot of moral story posts also there. So Ambika underscore Vedantu, you can start following me right now for all these amazing posts. All right, children. And until we meet again, Stay home, stay safe and stay happy and healthy. This is Ambika signing off. Bye-bye.